to the show. We've got a great Nashville meets world for you today. Uh, another one, another artist from LA who's doing a lot of country stuff. And I think California is becoming massive for country music now. Boys and girls, Amanda Kate. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. Dig the boots. Oh, Those thank boots you. They're, they're cool. You know, it's fun. I have had so many compliments on these boots since I have been here. And I got them uh, in Vegas at Cowboy Christmas. So, I've been there for that. Yeah, yeah that's a it's, blast. It's the best place for all things Western, yeah. all things, you know, cowgirl. That, that happens during National Finals Rodeo, kind of uh -huh. the first 10 days, roughly, yep. in December. And you could go there and just do all your Christmas It's really shopping. dangerous. My husband always, yeah. every year when I'm like, oh, it's, it's Cowboy Christmas. <laughs> For him, he's terrified yeah. because he doesn't even want to look at what the credit card statements look like. I went there because <laughs> I was living in England and we flew there for NFR one year and went to Cowboy and Chris and was like, I don't want to leave this. This is just cool. And it's even bigger now. There's yeah. so many different conventions, like all the convention centers. You can't, unless you're there for a week, you can't yeah. see it all. No, you can't. Even if without that, there's still mm -hmm. tons to do. Uh, so if you've never been to NFR and you're into the Western stuff, definitely. Yes, go you have to, I'm books, playing next like, year, so December. Like, if you want to go to to the rodeo, definitely go and um, yeah. follow me and come by and see me. I'll be there. Oh, you're gonna be there? We are. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, Excellent. so we'll be playing there uh, next year. That's a great gig. It is. It is really. It's probably my. We do PBR and then we also do NFR yeah. out there in Vegas, and it's a lot of fun. NFR. It's for people that have never been to it. it Limousines are replaced by pickup trucks with rear dualies. Mm -hmm. And all the hotel parking lots have horse trailers in them. It's just the whole town turns cowboy. Yep. And every bar has an after party and it's all country. And, oh, know, it's so fun. This year they had, <clears throat> there were pigeons that they were putting cowboy hats on the pigeons. So <laughs> it was like a huge thing. Like they were going right. crazy and there were. Um, the animal rights activists were all going nuts Absolutely. because the pigeons were apparently being taken advantage of. So. But they should have been happy because the pigeons' eyes would have been protected from the sun. Right, the exactly. Back. They were helping. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's like uh, during South by Southwest a few years ago, they put they gave homeless people T-shirts that took, were Wi-Fi hotspots. So they got paid to wear these T-shirts and. People got all upset because it was objectifying the homeless. But they got paid. Yeah, so you're like, I don't, I don't understand. I thought it brought light to the homeless situation because people are standing around homeless people and making conversation with them so they could get Wi-Fi. There you go. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so, I guess you're here to talk about music. Yeah, a little, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you've got a new single? I do. Well, an you, album, yeah. An album. So um, we had an album that came out, uh, it's called Time, and it was released in October, mm -hmm. and so we've been, um, it's been a lot of fun, you know, the last few months we've been doing a lot of shows and, um, you know, interviews and just trying to, to tell people about the album and, you know, do the do the whole thing as an independent artist trying to get people to, to download the music. So. It, it's a tough day for indies. It is, okay. it is, but, you know, I think I've learned so much and... I'm having so much fun. I just, I feel like I feel very blessed to be doing what I'm doing. So the cool thing I think too with indie artists is because you have to work so hard to get your name out there, and it's all done at the grassroots level. I think people are more loyal. They they have a sense of ownership. Oh, absolutely. You know, they bought into this person. And sometimes mm -hmm. the music even comes second. It's like they like the personality, and they they just kind of like everything about the person. Oh, the music's pretty good too. Oh, you know? and, they, and I think too in the same, with social media, as an artist, you they they know so much about your life. You yeah. know what I mean? Like they're attached to my whole story. They, they know about my daughter, they know about my husband, they know about my animals. I mean, they so they feel like they, they really know who I am. And then yeah. they also hear the music and the stories behind the songs and 
you know, and they have fun sharing it with their friends. And so it's definitely the hard, there's the hard part of the independent, you know, yeah. side of it, but then there's the, the great side too, where, where the fans do, they take ownership over it. Uh, so, so tell us your story for, for those of you who haven't followed her on the internet or anything. Yeah. Oh gosh. How much time do we have? As much as you want. <laughs> it's your show. Yeah. So, <laughs> Well, I've been doing music a long time. I grew up, so my mother is a songwriter and an entertainer. She was a she was a Dean Martin gold digger oh, uh, cool. with Dean Martin, and so she's been in entertainment. I mean, her whole life. I bet and, she has stories. Oh, her <laughs> stories are. I wish I had those. Yeah. I mean, like being able to tell somebody Bob Hope, you know, bought her a, a fur coat. Well, I, I wish I I wish I had that story, yeah. you know. Uh, but she so growing up with her, she's. You know, she toured and, and she was in ministry. She did a lot of um, things with churches. And so I grew up with, you know, an entertainment family and I've been doing this for a long time. Um, but the last couple of years, I've kind of, you know, I lived in Nashville about eight years ago and um, ended up moving back to, to California. Well, if you just give it two more years, I, the 10 year tell. You know, well, people say I, I love living here, but I feel like God had a different plan for me. and. It all worked out um, for the best. I went home. I have a, a little girl now who's adorable. Hi, Hunter, if you're watching. Um, and so being able to go back and I think I just, I have more to to talk about now that I'm, I'm older and. Um, you'll, you'll get lots more to talk about, trust me. <laughs> right? More things to write songs about, but yeah. it's um, it's been it's been great the last few years. So we recorded this album and the funny thing is that when we started writing it, I had no intention of even really doing an album. It was just, I had a bunch of songs I had written with my mom and um, she a couple years ago was diagnosed with cancer. And so I had this vision of wanting to put a compilation of all of the work that we had done together and put it on a CD and um, for just us, for the two of us to have this memory and this you know project that we would do together. And then before I knew it, you know, attention came to it and then other people were interested and, you know, venues wanted me to play the songs and, um, you know, doing interviews kind of yeah. like this. And so it's become, um, it took on a whole, a whole new life. Um, but yeah, so the album is called Time and yeah. we titled it that just because of how precious time has Thank been, you. you know, for my mom and I and, and just and everything in general, you know, this whole time and the time in my life right now. Um, and so it's been, it's been really exciting and, you know, we don't know what the future holds, but I'm, I'm here on the ride. And How's your mom doing? You know, she's she's in treatment right now, so she's, you know, she's doing, you know, everything that she can to keep fighting. She's incredible. She's, the the amount of fight that she has in her for the last few years, I mean, I, I couldn't do what she's done. Uh, yeah, but nice. it's, uh, she's fighting and we keep praying every day for her and, you know, we don't know what the what the Lord has, but um, we feel very blessed that we've had the last few years that we've had. Nice. Well, feel better now. Yes, thank <laughs> you. Um, so you're in L.A., and I'm finding there are, it, it's almost like in the 60s when the Bakersfield sound came out. I'm finding so many artists are emerging out of the L.A. Mm -hmm. scene with really killer country. Not just, and, and it's California as a whole because up in Northern California, yeah. you, you're getting that as well. Mm -hmm. Where do you fit into that whole burgeoning country music scene um, rebirth, I guess? You know, it's so hard because I think the California, you know, the Bakersfield sound, yeah. like they had their, their own um, style. For me, I grew up, so I was born in, in California, but I moved to New Mexico when I was really young. And so a lot of my sound, I think, really came more from almost like Texas country right. uh, because that's what I grew up listening to more so than than you know the California um, stuff that's coming out but for me I mean I don't know I don't know if I necessarily like can put myself in like I, I am California country yeah. uh, I just I create music that just feels right to me and that I like to sing and that feels good when I'm singing it and so I don't know if there's really a style that I can put myself in or a bucket at this point. It's odd too that you would think um, that being California, especially LA, it would have the country coming out of there would be really, really pop influence. Mm -hmm. But I find that stuff that comes out of California is much more traditional yeah. than you would expect. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing. I think a lot of people, because 
you know, I'm a female doing country from California. They're first, they're, they're waiting for me to do pop, yeah. you know, and, um, but the traditional country is just, that's what I grew up listening mm -hmm. to, you know, 90s country. And so for me, it's, it's, that was my whole thing. I was like, if I'm doing this, like I want, I want to stay true to what, what feels right for me. And, um, you know, you've got John Party, yeah. who I love his new album yeah. and that came out and, and he's doing awesome stuff for country music. So yeah, I feel I feel proud of what California's putting out for yeah. sure. And he grew up right outside of Folsom mm -hmm. prison. So he you know, he's a legit yep. <laughs> when you grew up at that near a place like that. Oh no, and yeah. he's a he's a true cowboy too. You know, yeah. you'll find him when he's home, he's you know, roping cows and, and having fun out there at the rodeos. So I, I love to hear that. He still has all his fingers too. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good because he plays guitar though. Yeah. That could be a problem. Yeah, that, that's the biggest thing with ropers is mm -hmm. losing fingers. Uh, you want to do a song? I would, I would love to. What do you want to do? Yeah. So the first song that I want to do is called The Package. Um, and it's one that I wrote with my mom. Um, and we wrote this song eight years ago and it was actually when I was living here in Nashville and she she would write me lyrics when I was living here just to you know to give me inspiration and um, she wrote this it was a poem at the time and it was all about her just telling me not to give up on my dreams and just to keep doing what I love and it, it was so beautiful at the time because it was just from my mom to her baby girl um, and now I'm getting to sing it you know to my little girl so this song that we wrote eight years ago that had you know a lot of meaning to it then has taken on a whole new life being able to sing it to my little girl um and so it's called the package cool let's go watch amanda kate do the package all right
Six nights a week, we're off on Wednesday, they give us a night off. A uh, few comments here at the Sin City Theatre, Tennis of Rock, simply the greatest show you will ever see <laughs> in the history of everything entertainment. <laughs> and Yvette, are you any work right now? Not at the minute, no. But I am auditioning for some shiz, and hopefully that's going to come off soon. Awesome! Let's do like a big rock pose, like, yeah! That's Spider Man. Tennis that's Spider Man. Spider -Man. Mm -hmm. um, that's Spider-Man. I'm, I'm used to Shaka uh, from Hawaii. Uh, yeah. That's quite difficult to do, isn't it? Yeah. That's like rubbing you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do that. All right. Back to Hollywood with Nashville Meets World from Las Vegas. Bye. Who are some of the, I mean, you talked, touched about, uh, touched on the 90s country. Mm -hmm. um, who are some of the artists then that you just were, were, are kind of, uh, not obsessed with, but really get into? Uh, oh gosh, I feel like that's a hard question. I, I mean, I love my my dad loved Brooks and Dunn, so I you can't go wrong. That I feel like if I think of like artists that you know were my soundtrack to my childhood, probably like Brooks and Dunn, Trisha Yearwood. I'm a huge fan of her voice. Is um, as a as a vocalist, that's someone who I, I just absolutely love her voice. Um, but then I also listened, you know, my mom listened to Bonnie Raitt, you know, growing up and, um, you know, most recently I've become a huge fan of Don Sears, who wasn't necessarily, you know, hugely, um, hugely famous, but her voice to me is when I think of country music and as a, as a female vocalist, it's, her voice gives me chills every time she sings, she was you know, with the time jumpers. Yep. Yeah. and, uh, so I don't know, I get, I feel like vocally, I get inspiration from so many different um, artists, you know, I love Celine Dion, you yeah. know, it doesn't always have to be country, I think for me. I, I you, you haven't started pounding your chest like she does or anything, do No, no, I don't know if that would work for my, for my state, for my show, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and she's done incredibly well in Vegas, mm -hmm. going back to Vegas again. Yep. Is I that know. something you would want to do as an artist? Uh, be able to like get that big that you could do Vegas shows. Uh, you know we play Vegas a lot, yeah. so be being so close um, to there, we do shows probably every other month there, and I love it. I love the crowd in Vegas because they're from all over the world. Yeah. I mean, we'll have people from Australia, from you know, from it's, England. It's from, like Nashville in that respect. You, you, it is. It brings so many different people and. And the crowd is there. I mean, everyone's there to party. You know, they're yeah. there to have a good time. Yeah. Uh, so I would, I would love it. You know, I think any artist, and not to mention that you get to stay in one place and you get to have yeah. one stage kind of be your home. And yeah, it would be awesome. Yeah, and they started the residencies here with at the Rhyme. Mm -hmm. Randy Carlisle just finished the work with. Yeah, yeah, I think she just finished her residency. Uh, and I think that's a cool idea that an artist can settle in. Mm -hmm. And we, yeah, I have, we have, there's a venue back home, um, and it's called The Ranch, mm -hmm. and we play there um, at least probably once a month, you know, if, if definitely if I'm in town, if we're traveling yeah. or things and I can't do it, but it is, it's really fun to have like a home venue somewhere that you can keep and your fans always know that they can, yeah. they can see you, you know. That's neat, and then it becomes almost family again, you mm -hmm. know, everybody comes to see you, it's, they've seen the show before, yeah. and they still come, mm -hmm. that's nice. Yeah. What what motivates you as an artist? What because we we said how difficult it is as a, an independent artist. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that can be overwhelmingly difficult. Yep. What motivates you to keep going over those things? You know, I've 
I think because I haven't doing this in a long time, um, but what motivates me is just getting on stage. Like every time, I love to entertain. Mm -hmm. I love, you know, that's that's what I feel like God put me on this earth to do is to, you know, to be in front of people and, and put on a show and, and tell stories, you know, with my songs. So my mom has always said that, you know, it's gotta be about one soul at a time. And and really for me, what that means is that if it's if I'm on stage and one person is moved, by my music like that's got to be enough you know yeah. that's always got to be what your goal is and so I've never wanted fame if that happened you know I get it it's part of the business but at the end of the day I just want to be able to make a living doing what I love yeah. and playing songs and as long as people will keep letting me do that I'm, I'm gonna do that and at, at that point I feel like I made it you know fame doesn't mean necessarily you know a number one hit on the radio doesn't mean that you made it you yeah. know if, if you're doing what you love that's that's more than you know more than I deserve so yeah, that's a healthy way of looking at things because people so many people come to town and I'm sure it's the same from an acting standpoint in mm -hmm. LA where they come to town with this idea of I gotta have a radio signal yep. and I gotta be big and they forget about touching one soul at a time yeah and you know it's this industry is it's like this yeah. you know and if that's what you're looking for I feel like if you're looking for fame and you're wanting, you know, having that, you know, huge success on that end, it's going to be hard. You're probably going to be dis pretty disappointed. But if you are just, if you're just chasing after what you're passionate about and you just love what you're doing, then every little, you know, small success feels amazing, you know, so. Uh, I bring this up often, Levi Parnell, like I was talking to him and he says his career has always been kind of like that. So he watches the people go up and mm -hmm. then they come down and go up again. He says, as long as I've got that, you know, a peak here and there would be nice. Yep. But as long as I've got that good, steady career. Oh, yeah. That's what I say. I'm like, if I can pay my mortgage and I can take care of my family and keep doing what I love, I mean, yes, I would, I have no problem if that's, if that's what that looked like for me, that would be amazing. Is it hard being away from your family when you're out doing these little press junkets and Oh yeah, I mean, I I miss them all the time. I mean, I but I also miss her when I'm, you know, like I could be back home and I'm playing a show that's one night. I'm, you know, I always miss her. But luckily, we have FaceTime and there's so many different technology has been a huge help um, when it comes to traveling. And I have a great support system too. My in-laws and my mom and you know my husband, uh, he's he's home with her. So I feel like. I feel very lucky that, that I have the support system that I do. Do you ever worry about being away long enough that they, people kind of forget your routines and stuff? And it's, and it's like, who are you? Yeah. <laughs> you mean like being on the road? Yeah, and like yeah. People, um, no, I mean, I feel, like, I feel like I have such a, t like so many touch points with so many different people with, you know, social media and yeah. text messaging and all kinds of things. So I don't know. I'm always posting stuff and calling people, and so I feel like it's kind of hard for them to forget about me, you know? <laughs> Sweet. You want to do another song? Yes, yeah, I would love to. Um, so this next one is one that I did not write. Um, my mom wrote this one, and we were actually speaking of Vegas. We were in Vegas, and we were driving back from a show, and it's about a three-hour drive, mm -hmm. three and a half hours, and we were in the car, and I love Western Swing. Uh, is you know good old uh, you know Texas swing is I I love I, I love it and so I told my mom I said you know I would love a Western swing on the album, um, but the thing is is I need I need it done before we get home and I was kind of <laughs> joking with her yeah and she was like okay and so by the time we got home she had the song written wow and so it's called Velvet Leather Tough and she wrote it really just all about my life and who I am and where I'm at at this point in my life and so it's become one of my favorite ones to sing because it is, you know, it's a swing and, um, but yeah, it's called Velvet Little Chuck. Amanda Kate, let's go do it and uh, it's from the album Time. Thank you so much. Kids changing diapers, the office 9 a.m. 
So for me to get down onto that C6 neck and be doing all that fun, different chords, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, it's so, for me, like, they're not people aren't really doing it anymore. Yeah. And um, so, but it, it, it's, I have so much fun getting, we just did a, um, we covered Ace in the Hole. Oh. And for a show um, back home, it was a, a Christmas show that we did. And it was George Strait versus Garth Brooks. Uh -huh. And so... Obviously, I had to pick George Strait. Oh, he's in George Strait. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, but we did Ace in the Hole, and it was, it, it was so much fun because it was so different from yeah. what everybody else, you know, did that night. But to see everybody, they get so into it because you can't help but love it. Once you start hearing it, you can't help but want to move. So. It, for me, it was, it was, it, it, it's partially that, but it's, it's that com, confluence of jazz. Swing music, the cowboy stuff, mm -hmm. and it's just this perfect, unique little thing. Um, yep. That and I, I remember going to uh, the Broken Spoke and seeing Billy Mata, mm -hmm. who is just an incredible talent, and he's just up there, and, and I mean that band swung it; they were amazing. Yeah. So it 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 is a great genre of music to get into. Yeah, and Asleep at the Wheel, they just came out with a new album yeah. too, um, which which I love, you know, and so I hope I hope more of that, you yeah. know, keeps coming out and we're gonna be releasing another EP here soon. Good. And so I'm I'm crossing my fingers that we can put a, another swing on it. So. Sweet. Yeah. Nice. Um okay, so now it's time to play Asked and Answered. So Asked and Answered okay. Asked ask with a K, not at Never mind. <laughs> uh, so, our viewers from around the world okay. send in questions. Okay. And you get to pick a question out. Oh, this could, okay, this could be scary. If, as long as it's not a Steve Goody question, Steve has been scolded. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, who is your favorite TV or movie star? Probably, probably Julia Roberts. Yeah. I don't know if she's ever done a movie that I haven't loved. So I, I really I like Julia Roberts, and I met her once, like being you yeah. know growing up in New Mexico. She had a house in Taos, uh, New Mexico, which is about an hour south of where I grew up. But I saw her once in a grocery store, and she looked so down to earth. And yeah. she drove a beat up VW, <laughs> like she just. She seemed really cool. So, nice. Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts, that's cool. That question is from Jerry in London. Uh, thanks, Jerry. If you have a question you want on Asked and Answered, just send us a private message, and it will end up in Nana's cookie jar, just like <laughs> that one did. Um, so, 
Amanda Cage is about to go out on her first international headlining stadium tour. Amazing. Who Can't supports wait. you? Oh, no. Hmm. I love that reaction. Go, go. Who supports me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I could have to be someone that I just want to hang out with. Um, probably. Oh gosh, can I have two? Sure. Okay. George Strait. Because yeah, he's got to hit the downside of his career. Right. Just be open. Yeah, it, I mean, it's got to. It's he's got to hit the hit the low point. And really, he'd be doing it just to support me. Yeah, you know, because yeah. he's, he's such a fan. Kind of, yeah, he's, he's a fan. Yeah. Um, and then. Probably, you know who I love right now is Cassie Ashton. She is, she's up and coming, but she, I follow her on social media and her music, she's doing stuff that's really different. It's more yeah. pop country, uh, but I love her social media because she's kind of wild and she has no filter and I feel like she'd be just really fun to hang out with. Agreed. So. I, I really dig uh, the women or female artists that, don't have that filter because it feels to me like they've been filtered mm -hmm. for a long time. Well, I think so, people are so afraid of saying something that they shouldn't and, you know, people not supporting them or not playing them and, you know, so, you know, I've, I try to, I try to be as careful as I can just because, you know, my mom was watching. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so no big tattoos. Yeah. No, no you know. I never, you know, the tattoos, I, I'm not cool enough. You're cool. No, I'm a like tattoo. You're wearing to be cool. pony boots. I mean, <laughs> doesn't get much cooler than that. Yeah. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, good luck with the album again. It's called uh, Time. Time. I should know that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Time. It's Amanda Kate. How can people catch you on um, socials? Or so you can find it's Amanda Kate Music on Instagram. Um, I am Amanda Kate on Facebook. Uh, Amanda Kate Music on YouTube. You can download the album, Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, wherever you get your music digitally, you can find the album. And definitely, if you're watching this, please message me and um, let's connect and figure out where I might be. And hopefully I can play a show in, in your hometown and come see you. Sweet. Thank you awesome. for being here. Thank you it's so been much. A blast. Thank you. Uh, thanks for watching the show this week. Amanda Kate, go and check her out because she is delightful. <laughs> uh, it's just fun to say that word, delightful. Yeah. You can't really say it straight. You have to goof around. Yeah. <laughs> um, make sure you catch me on Chris Country every Sunday all across the UK at midday following Kicks Brooks and American Country Countdown. Thanks for watching the show. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.